Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I realise I haven't really posted very much lately. I've been so busy. It's very it's very difficult to find the time. Um, but I thought what I'd try and do is like maybe regular updates on my work. I'll stick this on my second channel. So, you know, it's a bit less pressure and it means I can go a bit more in depth. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is some design work that I've been doing this week. Um, and it's all to do with laser interlocks. So that's the stop button system that lasers, they have to have for most, uh, for most regulations. Lasers need to have a stop button. Um, it's funny really, because you'd think when you're working with lasers that a lot of the hardware work that you do is going to be fun and exciting and working with laser stuff but actually like 90% of the hardware work that I do with lasers is networking stuff. Networking plus interlock stuff. Um, it's ridiculous. All the laser controllers are network controllers or at least the ether dreams that I use most of the time are network controllers. They live on a network. Um, and the interlock signal. So what you'll have is a stop button, usually with a wire, it goes straight directly into the back of the laser. The lasers will have an interlock socket. Very often these days, there are also RJ45s, you know, the same socket as the network port. A bit confusing, but that's the standard. Um, so you'll have one cable going into the ether dream uh, for the network and another cable going into the interlock port on the back of the laser, which goes into a stop button. That's all fine. Um, but what happens when you get to having more than one laser? Well, lots of lasers will have an interlock through, so you can sort of daisy chain the interlock from one laser to the next, but that kind of relies on all of your lasers being the same brand and compatible with each other which I can't ever be sure of because I've got many different manufacturers of laser. Uh, so you, what you end up doing is having having to split that interlock signal into multiple signals. Um, essentially, an interlock signal is two wires uh, and it's most simple. There are more complex versions, but it's most simple. It's just two wires. If they're joined together, then the laser is active. If they're not joined together, the laser isn't active. I'm getting into a lot of detail here, but this is why you come to my second channel, right? So um, you might be thinking, well, why not just pull the power on the laser? And that's a really good question. Some people do do that. Um, it's generally frowned upon. I I think it's not a very safe way of doing it. Um, because if you think about the mirrors that are making the laser move around, uh, as soon as the power goes, they generally go to an extreme angle which if the beam is still active will make the beam go off in an unexpected area and I've seen this before on my own lasers if you pull the power for, for a split second it just goes flying off. Lots of laserists justify this technique by saying well we mask off the aperture so if the laser goes somewhere we don't need it to go then it gets blocked by the mask but still I think it's safe to, safer to use the built-in interlock system in the laser and that will safely extinguish the laser beam without any unpredictable movement or anything like that. Anyway, lecture about interlocks over. So you got uh, a network cable for all of the lasers and then potentially you've got uh, a daisy chained interlock through but you can't do that if you uh, have multiple brands of lasers. So ideally you need to be able to split that interlock signal from your stop button into multiple lasers. And the way you would do that normally is by buying some kind of relay board so that uh, you use the stop button to control the relay board. And then that relay board has a bunch of relays in that closes a bunch of other interlock signals. So sort of one in and multiples out. So at this point, even with a relay board, you've got to the point where you have an awful lot of cables, <laughs> um, two for every laser. Um, and so what a lot of people do is uh, they'll put the interlock signal into the network cable. 
So you might know Base 100 network only uses four out of the eight wires in a standard Cat5 cable. Um, gigabit uses all eight, but if you're using Base 100 network, then it only uses four, which means that you can use the other four for whatever you want. And so lots of people generally will put the interlock signal through the spare wires in the Cat5, which means that then you're, um, you have to find a way to combine the interlock signal and the network signal at one end and then break it out at the other end. And then if you add into that like a relay board as well, you get to the point where you need some hardware that can handle this. And so over the last few years, I seem to have been doing so much work in building hardware that can uh, combine and separate out the network and interlock signals, um, plus also like a relay board that um, combines like a network switch with a bunch of relays. <laughs> so you can like split the network signal, but also split the interlock signal. It's been ridiculous. It seems to be some, there should just be like an off the shelf solution. Um, recently I've seen maybe X laser make some stuff. I think they've got something called um, Etherstop, which I've just discovered, which is a little bit annoying because it's very similar to what I've done and I could have just used theirs. But anyway, that's the great thing about standards is that there are so many to choose from. So I've made another standard, uh, which also uh, puts the network and interlock signal through a single Cat5. Um, so what I would generally do, and I've done this a few times now, is I've built uh, some additional electronics around a network switch uh, and added a bunch of relays. So you can put a combined input, which it's, it's, it's the combination of a stop button and the network signal going into the switch, break it out inside, pull out the interlock stuff, fire a bunch of other relays with it, and then combine each output of the, the network switch. Uh, so you've got essentially one combined network and interlock signal going in and multiple combined network and interlock signals coming out. So you can just put your computer or your router or whatever into the network signal, merge it with your stop button, and then you've got loads of outputs that are all combined. They can go straight to the laser and then you can break out those two signals. Um, and uh, an instant back out into network and interlock again. So, I mean, it's ridiculous because it's such a simple concept, but it seems to have just been monopolizing so much of my attention. Uh, you know, in a, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, I made these things, which are little, little splitters. So you put the combined signal, um, combined network and interlock into there and it breaks it out into network and stop button. So I call these net stops. I've also built a bunch of like, um, yeah, like I mentioned, like network switch adapters. You can see here in this Fusion 360, this is a PCB that uh, has a bunch of a bunch of relays on it. You can't see it on this version, um, but see see this footprint here. That's like an existing um, network switch board, and I can literally just like solder it in. <laughs> It's uh, so it's a quick way to get all the network stuff in. But these, I mean, it's been mostly fine, actually. And I've built four of these into little rack cases, half U rack cases, and they've worked very well. Um, but I've changed the wiring of my system quite a few times. Um, most recently, I changed it so that I was using all four of the spare wires. So now um, it uh, conforms to the British standard. Oh, is it 80625? I always forget the number. It's something like that. Um, where not only do you have a stop button, but when you activate it, you have to reset it. I did a video a little bit about that in a while on my other channel, but there's more to update you on with that. But maybe I'll get that. Maybe I'll get that to that in this video. Maybe I won't. I've got a lot to get through. Anyway, that's the backstory. Um, Oh, and I've made a 12 port one as well. And this is the little model for the little splitter here. So these days I put my uh, laser controllers, the ETH Dreams inside the lasers, which means that I've got combined, I've got all the splitting stuff inside the laser. So I can have a combined input, network input, interlock and data split out inside the laser. So I don't need these, um, I don't need these splitters anymore unless I'm using someone else's laser. Um, so 
This week I've been redesigning these boards to make them a little bit a little bit simpler I guess and I'll show you what I've got here. So this is the PCB and uh, it's probably easier if I do a 3D model of this. Um, let's just get it into 3D view. So what we've got here is eight Ethernet uh, sockets and this one on the left is a combined input Ethernet and interlock and this one is a combined output uh, Ethernet and interlock and these six are all combined output and interlock signals um, but rather than soldering directly onto the network switch board this time well, I found these plugs these RJ45 plugs that can be soldered onto a PCB. So I thought that might be a good way to get from these ether cons into the network switch. And I've carefully measured these, so hopefully they fit into the switches that I've got. Don't have one handy. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, and for each one of these, you can see there's a relay, and these relays have uh, dual uh, outputs. So one of these relays can can provide two interlock signals. So why have I got an, an in and out on here? Well, these, you notice there's a four pole switch here, which can switch this from being combined input and output to being a gigabit input and output. And the reason for that is that lately, in my last project, I had 25 lasers and I reached the network data limit for uh, base 100 network. So what I'm going to try and do from now on is have gigabit uh, to all the switches and then use, you know, combined interlock data at base 100 between the switches and the lasers, and that should be fine. But if we're using these two input and output as gigabit, then how do we do the interlock? Well, I'm going to put the actual interlock in and out functionality on another on another board, and that's here. Uh, how do I get recent? It's here. So this one, this board, is going to go on the back of this. Again, I'm going to use a half U uh, rack enclosure. And this is going on the back. And this is going to be a separate interlock in and out. So if you're using gigabit on the front, you can use these ones, these sockets on the back as the interlock by itself. Um, so in out, uh, we've got a bypass switch there. I'm just realizing that it'd probably be more sensible for, for this one to be in and this one to be out, right? Because then it would mirror the front. Anyway, I don't see, I could redesign it. I haven't sent these off yet, so I could do that. Um, but what these do is they handle all of that interlock functionality and pass the signal on to the others. So I can either use the front two as gig or comb combination. Uh, but if it's gig, then I can use these back ports as, um, as separate interlock. So you'd have two cables going between the switches, um, but just one for the switches to the lasers. What do I have to say about these? Well, yeah, I think that's probably all. It was difficult to find a switch that was nearly long enough to reach the panel <laughs> to be the same length as these Ethercon connectors. But hopefully that will work. I haven't built one of these yet. Um, so we'll see. I think that's probably all I have to say about this for now. Um, let's just go back to the other one and see. Have a bit of a closer look at this board. So yeah, 
not too much to say about this, I don't think. Oh, one really annoying part is that for these units, it's incredibly useful to be able to see whether there's network activity. Um, and the network switches, let me get one, hold on. If I can show you. So there's these little net gears. Um, and you can just see that little tiny dot there. That is an LED that shows network data is happening. It's really useful to bring that forward to the front of the enclosure because, you know, most of the time when you're on site and the lasers don't work, it is because of network issues. So it's super helpful to get that light to the front. I was thinking, well, how could I do it? Originally, I wanted to use a light pipe. Um, I've got some little light pipe filament here of various widths. So I could use that to bring that light just through to the front. That's my preferred option. But I think the way it was arranged, it's just a bit too close. If we look at this, it's just a bit too close to... Um, I'm not sure there's enough room <laughs> to go through the ether cons. Although I did move them down, so it might be possible now. We'll see when I get the PCB back if that's possible. But in the meantime, what I've had to do, I, I looked at the... So this has got the LEDs and the RJ45s all built in. Um, so there are actually two pins for each LED on the back. So I could just piggyback onto those, um, but then it'd be like 16 wires. After a process of some... Uh, a, what would I say, reverse engineering, I figured out that the LEDs were actually run on a multiplex, a 4x2 multiplex, so I could actually just get these LED signals just with six wires. So that's cool, that's what I've done, and if you look at the uh, this board, you can see there's actually a six wire JST connection there. So I can just like hard solder into this board and get those LED signals, LED signals out. Super annoying part though is that some revisions of this board, even though it's the same model number, are different, and I haven't quite got around to reverse engineering those LEDs yet. It seems really weird. I haven't figured it out at all. Oh, just turn the lights off by accident. It's a bit fun. So yes, that is the ridiculous amount of work that I've been doing this week. Um, those boards are currently uh, getting sent away to be fabricated. Perhaps I'll do another video when it comes to making them and testing them. But yeah, so a very deep dive. I hope you enjoy it. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. Yeah, see you next time. Bye.